on in um, to the house of the Lord. Uh, as as um, the scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here this morning. Um, as always, we're going to uh, start our service with um, any praise reports or prayer requests. Any praise reports? Yes, sir. Amen. 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 We're glad you have a place to stay. Um, and we're going to be praying for you that that becomes a permanent place to stay. Because we know that God, we've never seen the righteous forsaken. Um, so we, we know that God can provide for you. Thank you for being here this morning. And thank you for worshiping with us. Um, any other praise reports? Any prayer requests? Let me start off by um, say asking for prayer for Miss Dottie, as well as my wife, who wasn't feeling this good this morning, as well as Matthew, who was, uh, both have a stomach bug, so we decide, they decided to stay home. Uh, Miss Hattie. Amen. Pray for your sister. she have um, a recovery, a rehab for her spine surgery. Um, Brother Matt. Yep. Okay. Amen. We're going to be praying. Continue to pray for your father-in-law that he continues to get stronger. We just prayed for him last week, and we're just glad to see that he's doing better. My brother. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. So, and your sister's name is Carolyn. And your name is Paul. Amen. Amen. That's a great name. That's my name. Uh, uh, so, we prayer for Sister Carolyn. Any other prayer requests? Oh, man. We, we're going to pray for Braden. Braden woke up this morning with a nosebleed. Um, Sister Vicki. Be in prayer for Sister Trina. Uh, Sister Jasmine, did you? Okay. Uh, yes. Pray for the Turners. Um, Nikki got back from the mission trip and went on vacation. Man, that's a great little couple of weeks right there. Um, so, pray for the Turner family that they return home safely. Yes, Sister Aikima. <laughs> <laughs> yes, amen. We so thankful that Josiah is feeling better and back with us. Uh, and see, the parents, they, sorry, I told y'all, I warned y'all when y'all had the baby that it's not going to be about y'all anymore. <laughs> and, and, but um, yeah, there's just proof that, that they, the, <laughs> when you have children, nobody cares about you as the parent anymore. Uh, anybody else, any prayer requests? 
Um, I'm going to ask Brother Mac if he, he wouldn't mind coming and praying for us um, as he comes. Mac, just continue to lift us up. As a church family, we just want to continue to grow as a church body of believers and we stay healthy and be um, on one accord. So, Brother Mac. Hey, man, Pastor Mike, ought to ask me to come to pray more often. I walked up here without the cane. <laughs> hey, man. Father God, we just want to thank you this morning, first and foremost, for being here in your house, a house that is called by your name. We want to thank you for each and every member that's a summer here, especially for the little children, dear God, that is coming up. Father, we thank you for their parents. We thank you because they need to know that they have plenty of babysitters here that love to babysit little children. But, Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've said and everything that you've done. Now, Lord, we ask you to just bless the speaker of the hour, bless the church, fill this church with thy Holy Spirit, and just have your way. Bless those who were not able to make it because of the ailments, and, Lord, we know that you will go ahead of this prayer and just touch the bodies of those, dear God, that need healing. Father, you heard all the requests. Father, we just put it up before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I was going to say that. Y'all saw Mac got up these stairs with no cane. God is in the blessing business. Amen. Um, I just have one, a uh, couple of quick announcements on uh Two weeks from now, it will be Easter Sunday. We'll have an Easter Sunday breakfast as opposed to having after church. We'll have an Easter Sunday morning breakfast starting at 930. I'd like everybody to be here and be in attendance. So that'll be 930 on Easter Sunday. That's, I don't know, I think it's March 31st. I think it's the actual. Amen. Okay. And then um, we also... This month, the Dallas Cup is, is being held. Sister Sherry will be reaching out to you all that normally help, but um, I just wanted to let everybody know March 25th through the, um, I'm sorry, March 28th is the Dallas Cup Hospitality Center. And you know, we usually host that. It's going to be in the afternoon. I think it starts at 2 o'clock. But Sister Sherry will be reaching out to you. I just want to give, if you want to volunteer, let me know, and I can let Sister Sherry know. Um, if you're if you're available during the day, it's early afternoon, about two o'clock to about I think seven, um, six or seven. So if you are available to to help, please let me know. Uh, and with that, that is all the announcements I have. Um, the oh last one, but I kind of buried the lead. Pastor Miles will be the one giving us the bread of life this morning. Y'all be in prayer for him, be in prayer with and for him as he comes and shares what God has laid on his heart. I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for Mac for last week um, um, sharing with us too close to, for comfort. And so I'm looking forward to what Pastor Miles has to say to us this morning. So you be in prayer for him and pray with him. Um, we're now at the time for our offering. We will be, um, there's like always five ways you can give. You can give via the collection plate. You can give via our website. You can text to give. You can give via mail for those of you that are online and as well as via cash app. So however the Lord leads you to give, you can do so at this time.
All praises be to our God. So good to see all of you here on this day. We thank God for this day he's given us, a day that was not. I just consider it to be a privilege to come before your presence this morning. I'm so glad to see my cousin sitting right there, cousin Linda. <laughs> glad that you're here. So um, first of all, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will get into our message. Heavenly Father, we thank you, first of all, for <clears throat> just to have the privilege to speak a word for you. Now, Father, I pray that you would remove every distraction from our minds. I pray that you would use me now to your glory. Let everything that I say bring glory to your name. I ask you to regulate my thoughts, regulate my mind. We thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture this morning uh, is going to come in from the book of Matthew, chapter 7. And just we're just going to read a couple of verses, verses 13 through 27. Uh, that's where our scripture will be coming from. <clears throat> and I'll be reading this scripture from the New King James Version, Matthew, chapter 7. Uh, verses 13 through 27. However, uh, we have some other scriptures that I hope to use in reference to this message this morning. So we will begin by reading Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 13, just these two verses, verses 13 and 14. And it reads, <clears throat> Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Amen and thank the Lord. So we're going to talk from the subject of Two ways of life. Now, just to give you a little uh, introduction to this passage, this passage is taken from what we know as the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave starting in the fifth chapter of Matthew, chapters 5, 6, and 7, all part of a sermon that J Jesus gave to his hearers when he was on the mountain. That's why it's called the Sermon on the Mount. However, uh, just so you know, and I would encourage you to go read the whole Sermon on the Mount at, at, when you have time, chapters 5, 6, and 7, because in these three chapters, Jesus talks about a series of different things. Many of you are probably familiar with what's called the Beatitudes, right. which is what he begins with in his Sermon on the Mount. He talks about things such as salt and light, murder, adultery, divorce, love for money, giving to the needy. He talked about prayer, fasting, treasures in heaven. He talked about not worrying, judging others. And today, I'm going to speak for a few minutes about the narrow and the wide gates. Also in his Sermon on the Mount, he spoke about a tree and its fruit, as well as the wise and the foolish builders. So I would encourage you to go read that, the Sermon on the Mount. But today we're going to focus on, as he is drawing a close uh, in chapter 7 to his sermon, uh, we're going to talk about the narrow and the wide gate. Now, uh, you'll notice that in the, in the two verses that I read, uh, you know, one of the things we know about Jesus was he was direct. And he makes these two uh, verses here, which in a sense really is an exhortation. He's exhorting us to hear what he's saying. So if I want to, if I may talk to you just for a few minutes about the two ways of life. Now, I will tell you, 
uh, these two ways of life, there is no third option. And I, wanna, I want you to ponder this question in your mind as we, look at, as we talk about this subject. And I, what I want you to do is ponder in your, this question in your mind. Uh, you answer this question to yourself. And the question is, where will you end up? Every road leads to somewhere. You need to determine what road you're on. Because depending upon what road you're on is going to determine where you end up. Now, very often, sometimes I like to go down to Louisiana, which is where I was born and raised. For those of you who know, Louisiana is east of here. Well, if I'm going to go to Louisiana and I'm heading west, I'm in trouble. And so I want you to ponder that question is, where will you end up? It will depend upon what road you, that you're on, okay? Now, as an illustration, I want to use this. Uh, just last week, I was at my sister-in-law's funeral. And as we went to the grave site, where my sister-in-law was buried, my mother-in-law is buried, another sister-in-law is buried, her husband is buried there in this, in this one little area in the cemetery. So while we were there, we decided to go visit their grave sites. And I'm standing there looking down at the, uh, the tombstone, and my niece is standing there. So I walked up behind my niece, and I whispered this in her ear. I said, one day you're going to be right here. She said, oh, I don't want to talk about that. She didn't want to go there. But the fact remained, we must all pass that way. And, and the thing is, depending upon what road you own is going to determine where you go when you die. And so Jesus here is very direct. So he gives us these two ways of life. He says, really, this is a warning. Really. It's a warning, and Jesus is direct. He says, enter by the narrow gate. So he's already telling us, he's already telling us, you got one choice is, is to enter into the narrow gate. And then he says, because if you enter into the, you better enter into the narrow gate because the, 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 for the for wide is the gate, wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. So let me tell you, let me, let me drop this on you. You, all of us, we were born on that road. Why? Because we were born in sin. So we're, so, so if you, all of us human beings, we were already on that road, the right road. But Jesus has given us a choice. Remember, there's no third option. So he says, you need to enter in through the narrow gate. So, so let, me, let me give an example. In ancient times, in ancient times, see, Jesus' hearers knew what he was talking about. Because in ancient times, you know, cities had walls around it. In order to get to go into the city, you had to go through a gate. And usually during wartime, they would close that gate. But what Jesus is saying is, is that the narrow gate is a gate that you can walk through if you want to go through it. Because we're already, we were already on the wide road. The gate is the beginning of the road. So you need to determine, I need to determine what road am I on. Am I still on the, did I go through the broad gate, which we all were born in? We're all on that road, that is, if we're not already going through the narrow gate. Then he said, here's the reason why. He says in verse 14, he says, narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. But he, but he says, here's why. Because 
Very few find it. A lot of folk are on the big wide road, the wide gate. A lot of folk go through that gate. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But very few folk go through the narrow gate. So let's talk about those two ways. Number one, we're going to talk about the broad way, which is in and in through by the big gate that we were all born on. Okay? And then the second way is the narrow gate. That leads down the narrow road. Now let's see. Let's talk about this two, these two, two, two options, because there's only two. I wish I could give you a third, but there is no third option. There's only two. You can't be looking around and say, "Was well, there another way?" No, there's only two. Okay. So here's what we know about the Broadway. The Broadway. Uh, let me tell you what you can do on the big Broadway that a lot of folk are on this road. Number one, you can do anything you like on the broad road. That word broad means big, wide. Uh, it, but keep in mind now, the broad way leads to destruction. Keep that in your mind. Okay. Then number two, uh, you can call your own shots. Uh, you can make your own rules. You, you, you can be king of the road. Also on this broad way, you can carry all the baggage of your sins with you. Uh, and then the other, another thing you can do while you're on this broad road is you can please yourself. That was a song a long time. Time ago, Brother Mac, you probably, I don't know, you may not know nothing about it. Cause the, y- y'all, some of y'all remember the group, the Asses Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> There's a song that said, do your thing. Do what you want to do. That, that, that's the, the broad road. A lot of folk are on that road. To please yourself. Uh, call your own shots. There's a scripture that I want to mentioned to you that, that, that backs this up. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 says, says it this way. See, we all, if we, if we would be honest with ourselves, are guilty of this. There's a way that seems right to a man. But it ends in the way of death. You do know that the wages of sin is death. Uh, But the scripture also says that sin is pleasurable for a sin. You know, it's pleasurable for a season. It feels good. There used to be an old saying, Brother Smith, that if it feels good, do it. Some of y'all might have heard that before. But it'll get you in trouble. That's the broad road. Uh, another thing about the broad world is, is that sin brings pain and, and sorrow. You don't have to answer, but how many times have we made bad decisions and suffered for it? But one thing I've discovered is it's better to suffer for doing what's right than to suffer for what's doing what's wrong. And so that's, that, that is a description of the, of the, of the, of the broad road. Now, Let's talk about the narrow road, the narrow way. Jesus says, enter in through this way. Because broad is the road and and, and wide is the way. Uh, It's wide open, very spacious. A lot of folk go in, in that way. But the narrow way is what Jesus is exalting us to take to go through. And to stay on that road, the narrow road. Let's see, let's talk about that. That word narrow means constricted. It means it's tight. It means that it's difficult. Let's see why. Well, first of all, it is opposite of the broad way. You can't take all your sins with you. Because it's narrow, it's tight. You got to let something go. A lot of times we want to hold on to stuff. 
Just let it go. Because you're going to have to let it go if you're going to get on the narrow road. To be on the narrow road, it means that you no longer get to do what you want to do. You can't do what pleases you because why? We should be looking and seeking to do what pleased God. This is the way that Jesus is exalting us directly to, to enter through the narrow gate. Uh, and another thing is, is you cannot make up your own rules when you're going down the narrow road. I, I wish I could give you a third option, but there is no third option. You can't make up your own rules. Uh, and, 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 and check this out. You can expect difficulty uh, when you're going down the narrow road. You may have to give up some things. You may have to suffer a little, a few things. The Bible tells us that those that live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Some of your friends may not want to hang out with you anymore. You may have to say no to yourself when you're going down the narrow road. The sin for nature will find that, that it's narrow. See, let me, let me, let me back up. You do know that in, in my, well, I, I can, I'm going to speak for myself, but it's, it's true for everybody. In my flesh, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. It's, it's, it's in our nature to do wrong. And so, therefore, uh, there's a war that's going on in my, in, my, in my body. My flesh says, you need to do it, but the Spirit says, oh, 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 wait a minute, don't do that. And sometimes we quench the spirit because the spirit is saying you ought to do this. And we say, no, I don't want to do that. And so that's the reason why this, there's a war going on in my moral body when my flesh says, no, do that. But the spirit says, do this. I have to listen to the spirit if I want life. Now, when you, when you, when you read this in verse 14 of our text, it says, why? Because the narrow because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there's a few who find it. So if you fall in the crowd, you better watch out. Because the crowd will, will, will lead you down the wrong path. You need to seek for yourself the true way. And follow Jesus. Because if you don't. You're going to end up on the road to destruction. And so, and so it's important that we understand that the, this narrow way, first of all, has to be pursued. Jesus says, knock, and the door will be open. You, if you want to be, go through the narrow gate, you have to pursue it, and then you have to stay with it. Let me, let me, let me drop this other scripture on you. In Psalms, Psalms number 119, verses 9 through 11. Uh, we, may, we may have that up here in just a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. Psalms, listen to this. Let me, let me back up. So it's important for you and I to understand that the narrow road is the right road. Why? Because Jesus says, narrow is the gate. And difficult is the way. Why? Because you got to pursue it. That, that there's going to be some time where you have to have self-denial. You have to be able to say, no, I ain't doing that. I don't care if you do it. I know you my BFF. I don't even know if they say that anymore. But anyway, you go ahead, but I'm not going in that direction. And Jesus says, why? Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. What life? Eternal life. How, how many of y'all know that this life, this physical, the living that we're doing right is only temporary compared to eternity? And so this narrow road leads to life. And Jesus says in very few families. Reason why very few find it is because of that broad road that everybody likes. Well, not everybody, a lot of folk. And so Psalms 119, this is this is this this is about 
being on the narrow road has to be pursued. It, it needs to be desired. It just doesn't fall to you just because you're just sitting there. You got to do something. Every, everybody's on the, on the broad road until they make a decision to go through the narrow gate. Look, look at what the psalmist says. The psalmist says, there it is. It's, he says, how can a young man, that means anybody, how can a young man cleanse his way? In some translations, it says, how can a young man keep his way pure? By taking heed according to your word. That's how you do it. Well, if I'm going to take heed to his word, but I don't never read his word, I don't come to Bible study, how am I going to heed to what I don't know? After the service is over, if y'all know how to answer, come tell me how to do that, because I don't know how to do that. So the psalmist says, if you want to keep your way pure, then you need to take heed according to not what I say or somebody else, but what the word of God says. Now, now, now notice what the psalmist said. He says, with my whole heart, I have sought you. Remember, I just told you that in order to go through the narrow gate, you have to pursue that. And your pursuit never ends. He says, with my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me, let, me wander from, let me wander from your commandments. He says, you, your word I have hidden in my heart. Well, how can I hide his word in my heart when I don't know what his word is saying? Let me admonish you for a moment. Your number one priority is to come to Bible study. Your number one priority is to stay in the word. Because if you're going to be on the narrow road, you got to be into the word of God. He says, your word I have hidden in my heart. Why? That I may not sin against you. That's the reason why I told you it's difficult. Because my flesh says, oh, no, you got too many things going on over here on this on this big wide road. You can do whatever you want to do. That's a trick of the devil. The devil comes to steal. To kill. And to destroy. Remember the wide road leads to destruction. Now it may seem like it might feel good for a few minutes. But there's trouble around the corner. And so Jesus is telling us. we If you want to be on the road that leads to life, you need to come through the narrow gate. The sinful nature will find the narrow road to be very tight. You can't take a, a bunch of junk with you. There's, there's going to have to be some pulling off. I'm still pulling off stuff. There's going to be some self-denial. There's going to be some sacrifice. Uh, there's going to be some suffering on the narrow road. But it all leads to life. Eternal life. So remember that question? Where will you end up? It's going to determine what road that you're on. And so only you can determine that. Well, listen to this. All roads, all roads. In somewhere. Where will your road end? Now, let me mention, I didn't give this scripture to our, uh, for us to put up, but I, I, I feel like I need to, sh I feel like I need to share this, this scripture, this, this passage. Some folk thought that they were on the narrow road. Because if you read the, down a few passages down in John, um, excuse me, in Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to just jump down real quick for your hearing to verse 21 and 22 and 23. Right. Now watch this now. See, some folk thought that they were on the narrow road. Now watch this. 
He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Just because you're saying Lord, Lord, don't mean that he's Lord, Lord. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name? And done many wonders in your name? Have we not done all of that, Lord? Notice what verse 23 said. And then I will declare to them, Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, 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 in some translation, workers of iniquity, or depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, you may be wondering, what, what, what happened? That's a great question. Here's, here's what happened. They knew about Jesus, and they could do some things, but they didn't have a relationship. See, it's important for all of us, brothers and sisters, to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not so much about what you do, but do you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, let me, let me, let me share this with you. Back to being on that narrow road. Another scripture that comes to mind uh, is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. So if we're going to be on that narrow road, here's what some, 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 more, some more nuggets, some more uh, uh, some things that you, some scripture that you need to listen to. Listen to what it says. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6 says that we need to trust in the Lord. And how should we do that? With all of our heart. Now, those are just not mere words, but these are things that acquires action. Remember, I told you earlier that if you're going to be on the narrow road, it requires us, me, to pursue that. And one way to pursue that is to understand that I, I can no longer just be about pleasing myself, which is easy to fall into that trap. We like stuff. We like to do this and we like to do that. But don't make that your number one priority. Notice what the son of the proverb writer says. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean. Let me say that again. Do not lean. A lot of times I get myself in trouble, brother, back when I'm leaning too much on what I think. So he says, and lean not on your own understanding. Now, I believe that everybody in here got some kind of understanding. But don't lean on your own understanding. The psalmist says that in all your ways, and the last time I checked, all, I know this is hard, but all means everything. All means all, right? The scripture says in all of your ways. Now, I got some ways, and you got some ways, but is it in all your ways? Yes, in all of your ways. Acknowledge who? Acknowledge Christ. Acknowledge him. And, and when we do that, the, the proverb writer says, he shall and he will direct your path. In other words, he'll help you stay on that road, on that narrow road. Because this is the road that Jesus says. He starts off in verse 13. He says, enter in by the narrow gate. That's what he said, right? Well, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, Thomas uh, asked Jesus the question. Jesus was getting ready to go away. And Thomas said to him, Lord, uh, we, we, this is in John 14, 5 through 6. Thomas said to him, Lord, uh, we, do not, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? That's a great question. He says, Jesus responded to him. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one, you, me, everybody else, no one comes to the Father except through me. 
Now, I, I didn't give them this scripture, but I got, I, it just came to my mind. I got to back up for a moment. In the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus told his hearers, he said, listen, except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And so we have to understand that Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And then he said, said this as I close. Y'all remember the story of, of Lazarus. Uh, Mary and Martha was his sisters. Uh, one of the sisters says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Well, let me tell you what Jesus ends up telling Martha, and this is for us today. Remember, the narrow road leads to life. Jesus told her, he says, listen. He told, he told Martha, he says, listen, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me, watch this now, shall never die. But the key is he asked her a question. And, and I'm asking you this question. He, he, asked, he, he asked her, he says, do you believe this? That's for you and me. Do we believe this? Um, listen. In a sense, this warning, this is a warning when Jesus says, enter into the narrow gate. And how wide the broad road is, and a lot of folk are on it. Yes. But very few folk find the narrow gate. And I just told you why. Mm -hmm. Because you got to pursue it. There's, there's some work involved. There's, some, there's a relationship that's involved. A relationship with Jesus Christ. I believe that this warning exists to call all of us, they, I, we, we are the hearers. We're hearing this word. And so I believe that this is a warning uh, to call all of us hearers into discipleship. There's a scripture that we've been kind of consorted to memory. We've been saying it so many times. And in the, in the, in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 19, it says that Jesus said this to his followers. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that all, all of us in here are followers. All right, all right. So Jesus says, if you follow me, I'll make you to become fishers of men. Because that's what's required on the narrow road. And so, again, back to that question. Where will you end up? Two ways of life. No third option. You have to make a choice. Either we on the broad, wide road or we on the narrow road. And he exalts us to enter in by the narrow gate. Listen. Do you believe this? See, the thing is, we believe that Jesus Christ in him, salvation is the way. He is the way. We believe that Jesus died. We believe that he was buried. We believe that he rose on the third day. We believe that he is God. If you believe those five things, that's all, that's all you have to do. Stay on that road. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your word. Help us to stay on the right road, the road that leads to life. If we have not, if there's someone here who's not made that choice, we ask you now that your Holy Spirit would convict our hearts, that we would make the right choice to enter in the narrow gate, the gate that leads to life, the road that leads to life. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers all of our sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.